So, Creative Cloud, is it worth it? Hello guys, my name is Moltanen and by Creative Cloud I mean two things. The first one is the obvious Creative Cloud subscription model and the second one is the recently released update to the Creative Suite by Adobe called Creative Cloud. So right now we've got After Effects CC, Premiere CC, Photoshop CC and so on and so forth. So the Creative Cloud subscription model is controversial on its own and it's been covered in many blog posts over the past few months, so I'm not gonna get into that. There are those of us who are pro subscription, there are those of us who are not. I personally am pro subscription. I mean, come on. The main argument that the people make against Creative Cloud is that they want to own the software. They want to pay for the box, they want to put it on the shelf, and they want to own it. Well, guess what? you technically never own your software. You're always licensing it. What Creative Cloud is doing is basically giving you a time limited license, which in the end, and I mean by the end of the year, turns out to be cheaper than if you would just go ahead and bought it off the shelf. On top of that, you get regular updates and new services that are constantly flying out of the Creative Cloud. So, you know, in my opinion, it's pretty awesome. If you're using Adobe applications every day to make a living, those 50 or 60 bucks shouldn't make that much of a difference. And if you're not, then you're just free to pay for the apps whenever you need to use them. And if by using them, you don't make enough money to pay for them, maybe you shouldn't be doing that to begin with. But all of that is probably for another video, probably the one that I will never record because this is all news. Everybody's been talking about it for a long time already. So let's focus on the Creative Cloud update to our beloved Creative Suite applications. Is it worth it? I'm gonna look at this as a regular update. So I'm not going to go into the pros of the subscription model. I'm just gonna cover the mere feature-based overview and I'm gonna tell you which features I think are worth upgrading for. As you know, my favorite application in Adobe Creative Suite is After Effects. So I'm gonna only focus on that. First big feature, Cinema 4D Lite and the integrated rendering pipeline. I'm really glad that Adobe and Maxon came together and they're going in this direction. However, at this point, it's not really useful in the production environment, if you ask me. The rendering times using the integrated 3D rendering pipeline from Cinema 4D to After Effects are pretty slow, unfortunately, and they're not really useful production-wise in a production environment. On the other hand, you might say that there's a tight integration between Cinema and After Effects as far as exchanging 3D data goes, so cameras, nulls, solids, and, and so on and so forth. And you would be right, yeah, we have that. However, we did have that already using the free Maxon uh, exporter plugin for After Effects. However, we couldn't import C4D files into After Effects. So now we can just import the C4D file, put it in our timeline, and then the cinema will be rendering it live in our comp window. And that's what should be worked on because that's pretty slow. I was expecting uh, to have a draft mode that would work at least half as fast as the viewport in the Cinema 4D itself, but that's just not happening. But there is a good thing about all of this. Since we can now import C4D files into After Effects, we can also collect them. So we can keep all our sources nicely packed and if we want to send the project somewhere else or maybe take it home from work, which let's say it we all do, uh, we can just use the collect file feature uh, and that's gonna include our 3D models, so that's pretty awesome. And there's one more thing to top it off. We get Cinema 4D Lite. Hello, we get a free awesome 3D application. Of course, it's limited if you compare it even to the standard Cinema 4D bundle. However, it still allows us to work on models. It has a very limited MoGraph module. We unfortunately don't have depth of field support in that, but it's good for the models. So the way I see it, uh, we can just download the models off of the internet or we can just develop them on our own, depends on how you used to work. But then we can just use the Cinema Lite to prepare the models to use them in some other plugin, Element 3D, for example. So, you know, even the rendering aside and the render times aside, this is still a pretty sweet deal. Another feature, new and improved Roto Brush with Refine Edge tool. Now, on top of just using the Roto Brush as you used to, you can refine edges. So, whiskey hair or fur or any other semi transparent heart to key, even by hand, features of your image are now extracted perfectly. It's just like Photoshop in After Effects. It's seriously 
awesome and fully automated. With the new Roto Brush and the Refine Edge tool, we get two more plugins called Refine Soft Matte and Refine Hard Matte. So that means you can actually use those effects with any keyer that you like, probably key light. So if you have a subject that is really tricky to extract, you don't really have to use a roto brush in order to have the feature of refine edge. You can just apply those effects and have that done automatically for you. We also have the new stabilizer VFX, which is simply awesome. It's like little Mocha AE inside of After Effects. It works similar to the 3D camera tracker in terms of that you get track points and that you can then edit and ignore some of the track points, stabilizing your image around a certain area, which is pretty awesome. But the plugin itself was rewritten and now it contains all the tracking data inside of the instance of the plugin. That means you can just copy the effect after tracking and paste it to other layers without having to track them and they will be distorted accordingly. That means making small fixes, removing objects, correcting skin and blemishes is now really easy just by simply copying and pasting the effect and changing its objective. And speaking of 3D camera tracker, even though the effect itself doesn't look much different, it was redesigned under the hood as well. So we've got new features like set ground plane and origin point and some other improvements that are really invisible to the end user. It just simply works faster and better and it's more reliable and it helps exchanging data with other 3D programs, especially the set origin and ground plane feature. That's just simply awesome. There are also a couple of small improvements that I really like. The snapping feature is pretty cool. We've all waited for that. There's the new Bcubic sampling, which you might be familiar with from Photoshop and something I've been waiting for for a long time, pixel motion blur. This plugin is very useful if you're compositing CG on top of a live footage and you want this really good looking motion blur. As we all know, rendering motion blur like real good looking motion blur from our 3D apps takes a lot of time. So it's only natural to want to do it in post. However, until this moment, there was only one way to do it. And that was by using the real smart motion blur plugin, which was pretty costly and sometimes even complicated to use. Now After Effects CC includes a new pixel motion blur plugin, which uses the optical flow technology or motion pixel technology, whatever you want to call it, and just simply calculates the vector and the speed of every pixel in your footage and blurs it accordingly, allowing for really nice motion blurs, either if you're just time remapping your footage or compositing CG on top of a live footage or whatever other scenario. This is just a brief overview of all of the features that I like the most in new After Effects CC. So what do you guys think? Is it worth updating? Let me know in the comments and stay connected. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and my own website, maltanen.com. Thanks for watching DFTBA and happy After Effecting.